through his still, small voice. And I'm sure as you, know, as you guys are reading the word, you're also hearing that still, small voice. But with all those three things, as Terry and Nina emphasized, it must not go against the word of God. As we're going to be teaching the tweens, we'll save you tonight if it goes against what's in the Bible. God's word to us, you ditch it. You throw it in the trash. And so they're going to continue with some different ways that God speaks to us. Join me in welcoming Terry and Nina again. <laughs> Starts, I just want to emphasize one thing. This day and age we're living in, we need to hear God. We need God's direction for our lives. We need to hear him for other people, as we saw in that clip, to encourage and to bless, to challenge, to teach. We need, we need to hear and we need to know his voice. So we're going to talk about dreams, visions, audible voice, and other ways that God speaks. In Joel 28, and also in Acts 2, 17, it says, And afterward I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. So that's what we want to talk about just a little bit here. And concerning dreams, um, uh, there could be dream god speaks to us in the night watches in fact when we go to sleep at night we say lord protect us in the night protect our spirits in the night mm. lord minister to us in the night watches and uh and there's battles that seem in the spirit that seems to be going on at night and sometimes uh you might be <laughs> startled to get up and have prayer time because it's really quiet then okay and um so anyway, let me tell you about an experience and a dream that I had one time. In fact, this was probably about 35 years ago. And I was, uh, I was so, so pressured. I was an officer in the Air Force in special operations, and I had, I had this fleet of combat Talon C-130s and gunships and all of this, and hundreds of people, and we were traveling, and it was just, it was so far above me, you know. I mean to tell you, I was on my face. I would come home and I'd say a simple prayer on my face. Oh, God, help. <laughs> and so the pressures were great. One night, I had this dream. I said, I can, I draw from this thing. And it was me. I, I saw Jesus coming across out of the ridge there. And I read up to him. And I just brushed his and everything was perfect. Everything was absolutely, it was just heaven. The peace, the rest, no problems. Zip, zero. He had it. He had a handle on things. He is truly in control. And to this day, I draw from that dream that I had many years ago. Uh, you know, when I feel the pressures rising and everything, I can just rest with Jesus. You know? So, dreams uh, is one way that he speaks to us. And, of course, visions. And in Joel and in Acts, it talks about the promise, I will pour out my spirit on your sons and daughters. So, if you have a son or a daughter that mm -hmm. starts having visions, or dreams, or prophesying, you need to be able to weigh that according to the word. You need to be able to encourage them in that. You know, and we can't take anybody else further than we have already gone ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the Lord would, would challenge you to redouble your efforts as parents to be the support if this happens. Because God promises to do this. So he spoke in visions where people actually saw what he was talking about. Like in Acts 16.9, it says, During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. 
And I've heard so many testimonies about um, God giving a vision of a person. And then later on, the person he gave the vision to actually ran into that person. That's the person. Um, I just read a book, um, same kind of different as me. I think there was a movie about that as well. And the lady whose story this was saw a black person and said, God told her he was the one that was going to change the city. And little by little, they got to know him. It took a long time, but God's word was true. And so also we have kind of internal pictures that God gives us. I've never had one of those open-eyed visions, but a lot of times when I'm praying, God will show me a picture. And so one afternoon, Saturday afternoon, we had planned on going to dinner with another couple, and I got ready. I was ready early, and I felt the Lord speak to me and say, I want to tell you something. I thought, oh, good. And, you know, I was quiet, so I could hear that. And so I sat down, and I thought, okay. <laughs> and so I just opened the Bible, and God gave me a scripture. And as I was reading the scripture, I saw a picture in my mind. And it was a picture of the, the man that we were, the other, of the other couple that we were going to dinner with. And he was on his knees, and he was weeping. And so I thought, wow. I really didn't understand it. And so when we, we rode with them, and everything was fine. You know, they both seemed really fine. We had a great time at dinner. We had a good time of sharing. I, I shared uh, the verses with them, and I, you know, talked to the wife more than the husband because Terry was helping him. And we had gotten home and said goodbye to them, and in half an hour we got a phone call. And they had taken her to the hospital with a heart attack. Uh, so that was Saturday. Sunday, uh, she was in the hospital, and they were going to do open heart <clears throat> surgery on Monday. And she did not live through that open heart surgery. I mean, it was like she was in perfect, it seemed perfect health. But when we went to the house afterwards, there he was, kneeling and weeping, just exactly as I'd seen in the picture. You know, I thought, yeah. oh my. It really made an impact on me. And Nina wrote this down too, by the way. It's really good to write things down when you hear them, when you see them, when you experience them. And so we're gonna talk about journaling, I'm sure. Okay, audible voice, scary audible voice. It's not really, it's not when it's your heavenly father. And occasionally God does that to get our attention Example, Samuel, you know, the story of little Samuel. Moses in Exodus, where Moses uh, thought, well, I'll go over and see this strange sight, this burning bush is not working. And then when uh, he, he said, and, and uh, God called to him within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses says, here I am. Okay, you need to answer. You need to answer. And I had, I've got one experience I want to tell you. The uh, Lord really uh, speaks to me a lot when I'm, uh, it used to when I was out running, wore my feet out, gave up my shoes at PTS because my feet were just worn out. And then I went to bicycle riding, and that almost killed me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But during those times, it seems like the Lord really, I could hear him. One day I was out mowing the yard, mowing the yard, I was pushing a mower back and forth, and he said, you need to go see Miss Fuller. Miss Fuller is this woman, widow woman across the street. Bitter, bitter as bitter can be. Her face is wrinkled up bitter. And you can try to help her and talk with her, and still she'll get upset with you. You know, and so I tried time and time, and I kind of gave up on her. And then I hadn't seen her in a while, but as I moved, I said, he said, he said, go see Miss Fuller. And so I kept talking. You can have a conversation with him. And I says, okay, I'll find her. Uh, what do you want me to do this time? Different. And he began to tell me, well, this is a way you approach it. 
this is a way you do it when you see her, when you find her. And they were so excited. I was so excited. And I didn't know, but I heard from the Lord. So I, I finished, finished it. God was through talking with me. I go in and said, Nina, we got to go find this woman. Uh, we got we got to go find her. And so we called the neighbors and we found out she was in a nursing home. She was dying of cancer. So we rushed over there and we went into her room. And just like the Lord had told me to do it, I, I said, Miss Ford, I need to tell you about the Lord. I need to share the gospel. I need to share about eternal life. I need to share with you about how Jesus died for your sins because he loves you so much. And 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 I and the Lord had told me, if she tries to interrupt, say, no, be still, hear me out. And so I did. And she heard me out. And then I, she prayed with us. Yeah, she prayed with us. And she accepted the Lord. Amen. And then we had a, then before we left, you know, I talked to her about, he that has son, has life, he that has not son, God has not life, you know. And so, then before we left, she said, well, I'm going to pray again. And so she prayed again. Two weeks later, neighbor come pulling up the driveway and said, this woman died. But you visited her. Well, yeah, we did. She was never the same. Praise God. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so then when I went to the funeral, well, I called up the funeral parlor that had them. And I said, uh, you know, when you get somebody or what are you going to do? And just let them know, I'll talk at the funeral I walked into that place, and there were about 25 women and men in there who looked just like her. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I told what happened. Okay, Nina. Okay. Uh, there are lots of other ways that God speaks. <laughs> and I wish I could cover them all. <laughs> but needless to say, we have such an awesome, creative God. And he will speak to us. In a donkey, mm -hmm. in a star, in nature, you know, it says the, the heavens tell. And there's no place, no language, no tribe, no place where they can't understand mm -hmm. what God is saying through nature. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, God is so patient with us. I just think of Gideon. And he said, okay, God, you tell me that you're going to use me to defeat the enemy, but, man, I just need, I need some help, God. Could you uh, do something with this fleece? And so he's patient with us. He really wants to help us hear him and obey him. And so... Two, so you want to do the two, two? No. Okay. Okay. Russia. Do you want to do one of those object lessons? Because I know the last one we did.